So within the nuclear unit, it's important to uh, take a look at uh, elementary particles. And so um, when we did the, uh, the nuclear unit, <clears throat> we took a look at, you know, the general structure of atoms and we looked at radiation and, um, you know, the, the forces. But um, with elementary particles, we can go deeper. And that's what we're doing here. So some particles that we looked at so far, right, you know, protons, neutrons, electrons. We also looked at, in radioactive decay, positrons, which are positive electrons. It's the anti-particle of uh, an electron. Neutrinos, <clears throat> as well as anti-neutrinos. And so, um, you know, we've looked at all of those. Um, now, in the 1950s, they started to detect particles from the sun. And... At that point, um, you know, they also uh, started to smash particles together. And all of a sudden, you know, we don't just have protons, neutrons, and electrons anymore. And, you know, these basic uh, particles of, um, you know, radiation. But we're, we're detecting all these other particles. And so um, the reason we don't see these particles is that in ordinary, ordinary matter is because they're very unstable and they decay quickly. And so we don't, um, you know, it's very hard to not only detect them, but also to study them. Now we know of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of particles. And, you know, they've categorized them. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of the basic ones here um, for uh, which fall under the standard model. So an elementary particle is elementary because it's not made of, of any smaller parts. And so we have three types. Um, we have quarks, we have leptons, and then we also have exchange particles. And these are the categories that we'll uh, look at. CERN is run by 20 European states as well as 50 countries in collaboration. And we talked a lot about <clears throat> the research there at CERN over the years. And now we're diving into you know some of the things that they're they're looking at intensely there. Um, they uh, say that they have about half of the world's total particle physicists, uh, physicists working there, which is pretty incredible. Um, there are over 10,000 scientists from more than 100 countries that are represented there. And um, yeah, it's made a lot of sense, you know, coming together for a, for a massive project like this. And so, um, you know, the, uh, the work that they're doing, collaborating together, is much more than, than we could have done, you know, uh, trying to do this research spread out. And um, <clears throat> it's kind of neat that many of our ideals in the IB uh, program correlate directly with what they're doing at the uh, Large Hadron Collider, the Collider there at CERN and the other experiments that they're doing. If you have a second, you can uh, Google search or um, YouTube search Richard Feynman's uh, video there. Uh, Richard Feynman on confusion, kind of a funny clip as we uh, dive into some things that can be a little confusing um, and a little bit, uh, yeah, for sure, interesting. Elementary particles are called that because uh, those particles are not made out of anything smaller than that. And so we have three types. We have quarks, we have leptons, and we have exchange particles. And these are the three types of elementary particles. Now, on your equation sheet, under uh, the nuclear section, um, it's section 7.3 in the current curriculum. Um, you actually have this table right in there, which is pretty awesome. They, they give you a lot of information here. There's six types of quarks. Um, we have the U, which is the up quark, C, charm quark, and then T is the top quark. Each of those have a charge of positive two-thirds E. Um, we have the down quark, the strange quark, the bottom quark. All of those have a charge of negative one-third E. Remember, E is the elementary charge, right? So um, <clears throat> one-third of that would be one-third of the elementary charge. And we have that there. Um, each quark has its antiparticles. So for instance... With uh, the up quark, the anti-up quark, you put a bar on top of it, um, would actually be a charge of negative two-thirds E, not positive two-thirds E, and it has the same amount of mass. 
So what I want you to try to do, you can pause the clip, um, go ahead and write down what the antiparticle of the down quark would be in terms of charge and uh, mass. Okay, so you should have gotten uh, a charge of positive 130, same mass as the down quark. Now, if you remember Large Hadron Collider, um, we know a hadron is made out of quarks. So three quarks together make a bar uh, baryon, and a quark plus an anti-quark make a meson. And so a proton then um, is a baryon, and we can uh, work that out. So a proton is made up of an up quark, another up quark, and a bottom quark. So if we add those up, right, we have a positive two-thirds E plus a positive two-thirds E plus a negative one-third E. We add those up, you know, positive four-thirds E plus negative one-third E. Um, with a, So we get a total of a positive E, right, which is what a proton is. So what I want you to try, you can pause the clip and give this a try. Um, a neutron is an up quark plus a down quark plus a bottom quark. Um, go ahead and add up the charges and uh, give that a try. And then when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so we should have, you know, positive two-thirds plus a negative one-third plus a negative one-third, and therefore it's zero charge, okay? So we add up the charges of those quarks, which are located in the neutron, and, and that's what we get there. All right, so the baryon number is also something we need to consider with quarks. And if you notice on the right-hand side over here, you know, you have the baryon number. And um, every quark has a baryon number of one-third, and then each anti-quark has a baryon number of negative one-third. And so um, let's get the baryon number for a proton. So a proton is UUD. So, you know, we have uh, one-third plus one-third plus one-third, baryon number of plus one, okay? Now, if we have an antiproton, which is a anti-up quark, anti-up quark, anti-down quark, we can find the baryon number um, for this. And so uh, if we do that, right, we have a negative one-third plus negative one-third plus negative one-third, negative one. So let's go ahead and do this for a meson, which is made up of quark and an anti-quark. Um, well, let's do an example of that where we have, let's say, for like this particle here, a quark and an anti-quark. Well, it turns out, right, we would have a positive one-third plus a negative one-third, and sparion number would actually be zero. So what's the point of this? Um, the nice thing with that is that in all reactions or decays, the electric charge and the baryon number are conserved. So not only electric charge is conserved, but the baryon number. So for instance, if we added are brought together an antiproton plus a proton. Let's say we combine those two, right? Well, we know the charge of a proton is plus one. We already did that. The charge of an antiproton is negative one. So if we bring those together, we end up getting a charge of zero, which means that they annihilate each other. And so what happens there is actually that mass turns into energy. Um, and so nothing exists then <laughs> except for energy. Um, that is called annihilation. Now, if you look at the baryon number, negative one, positive one, zero, right? So afterwards you have a baryon number of zero. Um, and so the, the charge and the baryon number is zero. Annihilation is pure energy after that point. All right, so um, let's go ahead and try this one here. Um, let's say that we had two protons colliding at high energy and uh, produced a third in addition to the first two. And so we'll look at here what would have to happen. So let's uh, set this up. Uh, we have the charge and baryon number, and we know that those must be conserved. And so therefore, if we start out with two protons, and you could draw those, and then um, we look at the charge of that first proton, and we have uh, the up quark, up quark, and down quark for a positive one of the charge. Baryon number of one third plus one third plus one third. Have the same thing for the proton. And let's say that, uh, yeah, we have uh, three protons being produced um, after the collision. So if we think about that, um, you know, each of those have plus one. So um, 
therefore, you know, if, if we had plus two before, we must have plus two after. So then we must have a, um, an antiproton that's produced as well. And uh, so that charge is therefore conserved. And so the antiproton would have a charge of negative one and, and then therefore it would be equal on both sides. And this is proof for that antiproton. So what's interesting too is that the baryon number um, would, would be negative one. So the baryon numbers would match them because the antiproton has a negative uh, baryon number. Now the strange quark is a little bit different because the strange quark interacts with all four fundamental forces, gravitation, electromagnetism, weak, and strong. And so, uh, you know, if you look at the comment down here, um, you know, all quarks have the strangest number of zero. The strange quark has the strangest number of negative one. It's the only one uh, like that.